But the moment she say, you know, I wish somebody would take me on a real date, I can go flip a switch, take her on a real date, and she gonna open her leg. I ain't did nothing else. I, I, ain't, I ain't pursued her on no other level. I ain't been consistent. I ain't did none of that. I just took her on one date. And the date don't even be a real date. It just be like, pull up. Let's go ride around. It be that type of thing. And she will open her legs just because of the attention I gave her. Today's guest is a mother of one who loves reading, suspense shows, movies, skating, sightseeing, buying hats, buying colorful shoes, and buying colorful lipstick for no reason at all. <laughs> She's the uh, life relationship coach of uh, Conquering Relationships, LLC. I, I want to talk about that because I love what she's doing with her platform. Uh, your training ground to learn, grow, and become a better you, Brave Hearts community. Let's show some love to Brandy Yates. How are you doing this evening, Brandy? I am doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, re I'm ready to see what we're about to talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have a whole bunch of stuff to ask you. So Okay. I got a whole bunch of answers. <laughs> For sure. I love the content. I don't know how I came across you on Facebook. I don't know if somebody suggested you to me or, but I started to see your reels and you were consistent, something I love. And the content you, I was just like, wait a minute. I just started watching video after video and then I started sharing and then even some of like stuff that you would post and text. And I was just like, yeah, I got to. I got to see what's up with her. But speaking of Facebook posts, you said one that I shared that I thought was really good. You said due to sex being easily accessible, it seems to have lost its value. So then by the time you get into a relationship, we are stale with it. Can you expound on that? Can you go deeper? Talk to me. Um, to, to not be long winded. I believe like we are such a sexualized generation. Um, I feel like we're just so free with it to the point where we have lost the value or the sacredness of it. Um, I do not believe in sharing that part of yourself with everybody, but it seems like everybody is sharing that part of themselves with everybody. And I'm just like, okay, um, just from hearing even men talk to me about situations um, because I am a life coach, so I do have men booking sessions with me, single men and married men and people that's in regular relationships. And one of their concerns is that before they got exclusive, the women were like extra, right? They wanted it. And in any time you wanted it, they wanted it. And then once they became exclusive or married, it was like now she's too tired. Or now, you know, the world is on her shoulder, so she can't perform. And they're like, well where was that energy you know how did that energy just leave all of a sudden when we together you know now that i've made you exclusive when you had all the energy in the world beforehand and um my thing with that is that i do feel like we're just over sexualized we just like giving it to whoever however just to get some type of feeling or you know feel whatever void and then once we get in the relationship now we tired exhausted we boring you know we we don't want to do what we've done you know before the relationship so <laughs> did i say too much <laughs> uh, no for sure no i again i'm you know just like when you and your car talking that's how i want you to talk <laughs> i want to say on top of that i did a video probably about a year ago about why he won't commit because mm -hmm. i get in my inbox sometimes, women ask, yeah, we've been kicking it, but he won't commit. Because there's some people that still like commitment. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I did a video and I said during research, I was talking about how men, they don't want to, they don't want the relationship because they fear that they might get too comfortable. So now that, yeah, we was having sex three, four times a week. But now that we're exclusive, we're only having it maybe once a week. Yeah. 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 Or even some men, and I know this might sound shallow, but he's afraid that she's going to get too comfortable. She's going to start picking up weight. And she's like, I got you now. 
who else do I have to impress? Yeah. So a lot of men psychologically, they would rather keep you at an arm's length, as they would say that, you know, give you the Heisman, because they know if I can keep you at arm's length, you're going to continue to do the things to try to impress me. I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype And see, I like um, because I believe that in order to learn men, women need to talk to more men. You know, not talk to and hear the hurt stories from women because all you're getting is the bitter side of it. And so you're not learning men for men. You're learning the type of man she dealt with. So I do believe in order for us to learn you guys, we have to talk to you guys and vice versa. So with what you said, the fact that I've seen so many men say that and then the women are just like, no, that ain't it. You know, and they come up with an excuse and it falls my blood because I'm like, listen, listen, like whether you agree or not, it's okay. You don't have to agree but listen to understand what they are saying because the truth of the matter is the statistics show this is actually what happens. You know, whether you agree that it happens or not, it's actually what happens. So we got to have these, you know, type of conversations so that we can start seeing like, well, yeah, I do kind of like slack up, you know. You know, once I got him, I kind of did like get too tired. You know, he come in late. Before the relationship, he come in late. I'm ready, hot and ready, anytime. You come in late now, boy, I've been with these kids. I don't work. What you doing? <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> yeah. And, and and that's a whole episode within itself with kids, having young kids, because I, you know, I got remarried at 40 and we end up having two kids together. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I have two little kids and I'm talking about like diapers and I'm 46. Oh, okay. Yeah, so yeah. that's a show within itself and how yeah. I deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> because I hear that a lot from women. They like, I work all day. I've been taking care of your kids. I cook. All you have to do is work and come home. That's all you have to do. But I'm I have to do all these other things. And then you want me to perform like a freak of the week at the end of the night. So I hear that a lot from women. What do you say to to women who who say they deal with that? Um, it is a lot of women that deal with that, and I won't, I won't deny it. You know that is a truth, because um, I am a woman and I was married at one point in my life. Um, I only have one kid. Um, I do realize that there were times where it was like, oh no, I'm tired. You know, I will, I will be too tired. I ain't got the energy. Blah blah blah. But this is what I would say um, to women who who say they want a relationship, like, you got to calculate your decision. You know, don't just look for, it's, it's good to have a title. You know, it's good to finally have a man. It, it's, yeah, it's good, but there's responsibilities that come with that. So know what you're signing up for. You don't just get in and just to prove to your homegirls and your family and whoever, your ex or whoever else that a man wants you. Like, when you sign up for a relationship, tired or not tired, you got to fulfill your duties. If you don't want problems coming in um, and, and don't, it's not an excuse for cheating, but if you don't want problems coming in, you don't want another woman coming in, grasping your man's attention, like know what you're signing up for and do whatever you need to do to keep your mental emotions or whatever together so that you can perform for your man. I agree. I, I like that because a lot of men, I mean, you know, we deal with temptation. We have so much stuff going on on the inside of us. Uh, the last thing we need at home is not to, you know, is to hear, I, I, I don't got it. I don't, I don't have it. I'm, I'm tired. And don't get me wrong. I, I, I get it because mm -hmm. women, y'all do a lot. I'm not taking away from that. But I do believe that there's, and like, I like what you said about making the necessary sacrifices because you want to be in a relationship. You want a relationship so bad but you don't want to do the necessary things to keep the relationship when you have it. Yeah, I don't know if you heard before. It's like people want uh, weddings. They don't want marriages. You know, so you, you want the glitz and glamour of it, but you don't really want to take the, you know, responsibility. You have an excuse for it. And it's like, I hear people say, well, I'm a parent by any means necessary. I'm not going to let my kids struggle. 
and I get it because your kid comes from your loins, but in the same breath, this is the type of energy we need to have with our, our partners, you know, our spouse, the person we committed to, like, they didn't come from your, your loins, but this is who you're building a life with. This is who you're doing life with. So that same love, care, and respect you have for that child, you got to give that to that person too. You know, the sacrifice you will make for the kid, make it for your partner. That's how you got, you know, work together and, you know, build that intimacy and that, you know, that sexual vibe back up in your, you know, marriage or relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if, if mom and dad is healthy, you know, if, if they're good, 99.9% .9 of the time, the kids are going to be good. Yeah. But I think we kind of do things backwards where we prior, and here when I say this, don't come for me in the comment section. <laughs> we we prioritize the kids, but then we leave our spouse behind. So when our kids, because I have a 19-year-old daughter, she'll be turning 20 this year, and I've raised older kids and from my last marriage. The thing, especially with boys, when they get older or when they get that whiff of a woman for the first time, when they start to be attracted to the you know opposite sex, they like, mom, I love you, but I don't, I don't want your hugs and kisses no more. I want her hugs and kisses. <laughs> and mama's heartbroken, like, what happened to my baby? Nah, baby gone. And I, I try to say um, to people, I don't really touch this topic on my platform, but I try to say to people who say, you know, a man can leave you anytime, your kids don't always be there. Well, that's not 100% true. <laughs> your kids, exactly what you said, that's an example. Once they start getting them hormones on and they find they per like they person, they're going to be with them. So it's not, it's not up to your kid to run your relationship or your marriage. You got to be the one to run it. So make sure you're with people that, and I'm kind of like going back and forth uh, with it, but I know people say if my kids don't like them, then they can't be here. But the thing is, that's that's real backwards. You know, kids, they, they ain't got no, they iffy on a lot of things. Like if this person that you're building a life with, that you're going to spend your time with, if this person is treating you well, they're not cheating, they dedicated to you, they sacrificing for you, that's who you need to be sacrificing for because them kids are definitely going to leave you for their own, per you know, person. So you know, you can't tip the scale too far towards the kids and then now you're lonely, you know, the rest of your life because your kids got their own life now. This is how I see it, so. Yeah, no, that's real. I agree because kids, they again, they do get older and they leave. And if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, or even if you're watching this or listening to this via podcast, let me know in the comment section. I believe that the divorce rates are higher once the kids leave the home, because now the husband and wife no longer know each other. She spent so much time investing in the kids. He spent all this time at work. So now that they're empty nesters, they don't even know each other. Ooh, that topic, that topic can get deep. Like I, I do, I see people say, and I don't, I'm not moved emotionally by a lot of things. I kind of sit back, observe, I'm more logical, but that's because of the work, the self-work I've done on myself the healing after my divorce and all of that. But I sit back and I see people say, well, how do you leave or divorce after all these years? You know, people, they look at the years and I'm like, y'all count the years, but you're not counting the moment. Count the years, but you ain't count the quality time. You ain't count the substance or like what I like to say, you ain't count the foundation of what it was built on. If your foundation is built on staying together for the kids, then guess what's going to happen when them kids get out and get out that house? Divorce. You know, so like it, we got to be real when we have these conversations, like stop. I tell women like we live in a fantasy land <laughs> in our mind and like we got to stop doing that. And, you know, when we stop living in this fantasy, then it, it will also allow us to choose the right mate. You know what I'm saying? Or not not settle for just somebody just to have anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Because the thing, and I like what you said about kids, kids could be fickle. And don't get me wrong, because I know, because I hear that a lot, like, if my kids don't like you, I, I, I get it, I understand. You know, my babies is everything, I get it. But a lot of times, they're not going to like you anyway. Because you, you ain't know? their daddy. Yeah. Or you, you ain't their mama. Like, duh. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't my daddy. <laughs> yeah. You ain't my mama, my real mama. Like, duh. Like, they ain't going to like you, of course. Until they like you, you know. Yeah, 
I, you know, you say you, you know, you eating real food. So I must be your real daddy. You wearing real Jordans. <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm just, I'm tripping. Look, let's not make nobody mad about the kids. No, people all about the kids. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah, let's not get started on that one. That's a whole different episode. Yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about promiscuity, whole phases, and soul ties? Like, these are things that, especially in our community, we hear these terms a lot. Uh, do you, because I hear, what I hear a lot is, Everybody should have a whole phase to get it out their system. So when they're getting when they get into a relationship, they they get it out their system, whatever that means. What are what are your thoughts on that? I know it's kind of a loaded question, but feel free to take your time to answer. Um, I wholeheartedly disagree with the whole phase. Um, when you look at society, you just look at even people who've been through whole phases, whether that's you or you've been with a guy or a woman that's in a whole phase or had a whole phase. You never get it out your system. I don't care what nobody say. I've never seen nobody going through a whole phase that got it out their system. I feel like you open the door to bodies on top of bodies, entering into your what's supposed to be your sacred space. I feel like you offer um, or you open up yourself to a lot of confusion. I did a, uh, I don't know if you saw that video. I did a a podcast recently well no the podcast is like over a year old but i recently just posted a clip from it and one of the clips i said sex is experimental but in that video i said with your partner i get that people want to try different things or you know whatever the case however you don't need to sleep with a bunch of people to try new things find you a safe person person who like you, person you like, person you committed to, person who committed to you, and experiment however you want to experiment. But to jump from person to person to person to person, and for women, you jumping through all these bodies and nobody is committing to you. Emotionally, you feeling it. Because then you start sitting with yourself like, dang, all these men I slept with and don't nobody want me? <laughs> like, but- uh-huh. But Brandy, let me ask you this real quick. What do you say to women who say that because I've I've seen some sav- savages out here, right? How do you, what do you say to the women who's like I can sleep with a whole bunch of men and not feel anything? What do you it's say? It's a lie. It's a lie. And you know how it's a lie. And I tell women, I've I've had people I was cool with that would say that, and I'm like, it's a lie though. And you know how it's a lie because if you're actually that dope, that tight, that detached to sleep with all these people you wouldn't feel no type of way when you see him with somebody else you wouldn't feel no type of way when you see you know him out in public with somebody else and you see women under his stats and all this stuff you wouldn't feel no type of way but a lot of women who do that i've seen personally who sleep around and say oh i'm good i'm i could do what a man do they so bothered so bothered so hurt so i don't recommend i don't recommend a, a whole face at all yeah, I mean, and I, I agree with that as well, but with culture and stuff like today, I know this conversation we have, it might not seem too popular, but a lot of, and I like what you said too about getting it out your system. People say, because a lot of times I think, Brandy, we're trained, we hear certain things over and over again throughout childhood, and we just continue to repeat it because it's embedded in us, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I, because I tell people, and tell me what you think about this. Men shame women for sleeping around, but do women shame men for sleeping around? Of course. Hmm. Yeah. I see it all the time. Because I because a lot of times I hear women say that they want to experienced men, right? But I guess exper- experienced is subjective. Okay. Okay. Because I do believe that women control a lot of that narrative when it comes to, even if women were to shame men for sleeping around, men would stop sleeping around. You think so? Yeah. If, if, if women, and it's not to put all the pressure on women, but I'm just saying, this is how much power women have. 
if Wait, women did you say shame or sharing? Shame. Oh if, okay. yeah. If if women were to sh- and I know shame is a is is one of them words, right? It's almost like a cur- curse word. It's like accountability. Like accountability is a curse word by today's standard. Mm-hmm. I and this is just my opinion. If women were because like men always talk about body counts and all sort of stuff. I ain't messing with her because she got a high body count. What if women flipped it and was like, you got a high body? I don't mess with dudes with high body counts. Men will stop sleeping around. So, so let me tell you what it is, because I do see that argument a lot. Mm. And what I've seen is men don't care. You know why men don't care? Why? Because they do be in shame. But men don't care because no matter what women say, they always go do the opposite. So I could say all day long, I don't want no man that's sleeping with such such, or I don't want no man that's in a relationship. I never did with a married man. And then life hits and boom, what are we doing? You know, so no, and, and these like these are things that I'm seeing a men are even telling me, like they you know, they call me B. Uh they be like, Man, we we listen to these women, they just be talking out their neck. Because if I go, they be fussing, talking about men ain't this, men ain't that. But the moment she say, you know, I wish somebody would take me on a real date, I can go flip a switch, take her on a real date, and she going to open her leg. I ain't did nothing else. I, I, ain't, I ain't pursued her on no other level. I ain't been consistent. I ain't did none of that. I just took her on one date. And the date don't even be a real date. It just be like, pull up. Let's go ride around. It be that type of thing. And she will open her legs just because of the attention I gave her. And I know people, you know, that's probably going to watch this. I'm like, oh, not all of us. It may not be all of y'all, but it's a lot of y'all. You know what I mean? So, like, just because it ain't you don't mean it ain't happening. But this is why I'm saying, like, women need to stand firm on what they want and don't want. But I don't think women know what they really want. I hear that a lot, Brandy. We got the back and forth. Uh, I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm listening. I hear that a lot. So, is it true that women don't know what they want, or is or is it is it maybe younger women or women in general or most? Ooh. I won't say all, but women in general. I, I've seen people younger. I'm 36. The young ones, obviously, you know, they getting trained by most of us. So the young ones doing it, middle aged people doing it, people my age doing it, people. 40 plus doing it and I'm like I even made a post before and I'm like if we as women don't know what we want or know ourselves why should a man even listen to us you know we don't even like I saw a post um the man was saying about women ignoring they or not listening to their intuition until something bad happened and there's a lot of women on the comments like oh well now we know our intuition we just don't listen but I was like well if you ignore your own intuition why would a man want to listen to you then? You know? So we say one thing. A lot of women say one thing, but we move off another because we move too much in our emotions, in my opinion. I can see that because I do believe women have a high level of intuition that's out of this world that I do believe a lot of women that, I mean, they spot on. And even from a biblical perspective, right? Like I'm a big Proverbs guy. I love Proverbs. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Proverbs, if you when you read it, or if you read it, wisdom is referred to in the feminine. She, she yells from the streets. You know, wisdom isn't described as a masculine thing. It's described as a as as a woman, as feminine. So. And I- I don't want to take you over too far into a Bible study, but for the women that's listening, even if you're not, if you're if you're not religious or whatever, you don't believe in the Bible, go to church and all that. I'm telling you, just to read the Book of Proverbs, it, the Book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. So if you just read the Book of Proverbs, you don't want to touch no other book in the Bible. Go to Proverbs, and you will see so much direction and wisdom there that will keep women grounded. Because I agree, yeah, it, a lot of it's referred to a hurt. And I understand why they say women have power or, or we smarter, which is a term that I'm going to debunk a lot in my content going forward. But we, we're we're told or we say women are smarter and we can because we're very highly intuitive. But the fact that we ignore the intuition 
and we go by whatever it is we feel like going by at that time, it that is why we're not smarter. <laughs> that is why we're not the smarter gender. Because um, I tell women, like, how is it that so many men are, quote unquote, playing us, dogging us out, getting us pregnant, but not committing? You know, like, how how is it a higher percentage of women that's going through that if we're the smarter gender? Preach. <laughs> you know, just, just to keep it shut, because I can go long with it, but. Keep going. I Keep going. <laughs> This is why I brought you on the show. You know, I, I mean, we just got to do better. We really do. Like, as as women, a lot of stuff, like you said, um, I think you mentioned, correct me if I'm wrong, if we shame the men on, like, the sleeping around and the high body count, then, you know, they'll stop doing it. And the thing is, I've heard men say women have way more power than they think, but the fact that they don't even listen to themselves, we're not going to listen to y'all. You know, so it's like, and I agree, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, when we talk about the book of Proverbs, like God made the man the head, the leader, right? But the women, we're the neck, we're the support. So if you supporting that head, you know, you are powerful because the head can't do nothing without that neck, right? So what are we doing? You know, why Why the neck not being the neck? You know, why are we not being smart? Why are we not being more firm and, and standing up into our power like we should stand into as women? I, I think from what I've seen and what I've heard is 90, 95% of women hurt comes from a man, whether if it's a father, a son, a boyfriend, an uncle, most women pain just come from men. And I will have to question. So again, I, like I said, my content going forward. So anybody that, that thinks they want to follow me, just don't come with your heart on your sleeve because I, I go in. But with that, say, say that's the high statistic, you know, the real percentage. With that being said, how is that possible if we're the smarter gender? You know what I mean? How is that possible? There's a disconnect somewhere or there's a lot of lies somewhere. I heard really ain't from them like we say it is, and we're magnifying. Like something, something is is in in there. You know, something in there got to be figured out and worked out. Because, mm-hmm. like they say, the math ain't math, and it ain't. Some ain't yeah. up. <laughs> and 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 I agree with you. I I do believe that. And I posted this on Twitter the other day. I was saying how you can. You cannot expect to have a healthy relationship when you hate the opposite sex in your heart, right? So many people, opposite sex, can't stand the opposite sex. Deep down, you 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 know you hate men, but you want a relationship. So it comes out, or vice versa. Men got mama issues. And he seen mama being used and abused and he was mad at mama because she couldn't take up for herself. And he figured once he got out here, you know, and that's a whole nother episode. But I think there needs to, and I know we use the word healing a lot, but <laughs> to recognize that, oh, I really hate the opposite sex. I need to get myself together. We're damaging more people because we have so many issues with the opposite sex because I'm just going to use them for one thing or whatever. And it's just like. Yep, we are. Um, and again, I feel like, I feel like women do have way more power than we access. Because my thing is, I, and I'm always stand on it. Women don't even know what they want, which is why we say one thing and we do another. Because if you know what you want and you know what you deserve, you off gate. If you saying the men have hurt us, 95, 90, 95% of men have are hurt have come from them. If we are saying this, then you have to question yourself as a woman, how is that even possible? That means you literally do not know yourself. You do not know what you want. And you are using your unhealed parts to get healed through a relationship, through a man, through sex. And you are aligned to yourself and confusing yourself because, and I'm not saying that's, that's the correct percentage, but because that percentage is way too high. 
how yeah. is it that men have hurt us that bad and that much, but we still want to be married? Where is something, something add up? The math is not doing what it's supposed to do. That's good. This is, a, yeah, this is a whole episode. Just that topic alone is, is a whole episode, right? Whole episode. Yeah, it is. It's, that's why I do Zooms and classes. Um, because I feel like, and I, I keep them low. I keep, I don't do a big group of people because I'm like, it's time to really start talking and really getting it together and really healing. Because I also challenge women on the same breath that, okay, men have hurt us. We are unhealed from men. But however, how is it that you want to be with a man that leads you, but you're so hurt to where you won't let him lead? Mm-hmm. So much deep stuff to unpack. Yeah, I'm just letting that sit. <laughs> we gotta talk about it, you know. No, that's that's good because yeah, that's another yeah. I'll stay on I'll stay on that topic further forever. <laughs> I want to talk to, I want to dig a little deeper um, about you've been through a divorce, right? <laughs> um, of course, this is scary to remarry, so welcome to the club. I'm trying right? to be back in the club, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long were you married before the divorce? Whew. Well, I was married three years before the separation. But I didn't get divorced until six years after marriage. What did you learn about yourself from going through a divorce? So this is where I have to take some accountability and not put it all on him. Um, Going through my divorce, when I started really sitting with myself, I started realizing that we, for one, never should have got married in the first place. Um, I think my... It's like my drive to want to be married from coming out of a rough tri- childhood and having this fantasy that, you know, I want I want the American dreams. I want the white picket fence, the cars, the kids, the husband. You know, I want to be taken care of. I always had that vision in my head. And so I think once I, I didn't grow up in church, but I did get into church, I think at the age of 19. Mm-hmm. And I ended up being married at 21. So look how fast that went. But I think once I got saved, that put the like icing on the cake. Oh yeah, you know, fornication, none of that. Okay, I got to get married. I finally get my American dream. And so I feel like I put this persona up and I allowed myself into a situation that I never should have been in to get married just so I wouldn't be quote unquote fornicating. And it's a lot in the midst of that, but I learned about my I learned that when I am not healing, when I am still stuck in my childhood trauma, I make decisions such as that one, big decisions to try to heal like the void that I feel from, you know, my childhood. And um, I didn't have my mom raise me, my dad raised me, abusive, all of that. So in my mind, I wanted this man to take care of me. Like I wanted him to, you know, protect me, just all the things that I did not get. And so I created a narrative, I created a fantasy in my head, and by all means necessary, I was going to get that dream. And I did. And God, what they be saying, he popped me on the back of my neck with his sandals. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have similar stories. I understand what you're saying, because, of course, we use... We use the scriptures, better to marry than to to burn, right? It's better to marry than to burn with us, you know? Um, and a lot of Christians and a lot of church going folks have has done has done that. Uh, I, w- I was married 15 years before I got divorced, and I never really was the type to run the streets. So to me, because I married at 24, so I'm thinking kind of like, okay, it's just better to just be with this one woman, right. get married, right? <laughs> you know. Um, at least my sex isn't a sin. That was my justification, I guess. You know, that would be. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. that's that's church talk. You know, that's. Yeah, church talk will get you in a lot of trouble. It can. Yeah. Yep. I wanted to ask you about what is the biggest mistake you see women make when they enter into relationships? The 
biggest mistake starting off, I feel like, is that we get into them for the wrong reason. And some of the reasons is, you know, basically what I named with myself is filling the void. You know, we get into it to fill a void. Um, we get into it to, you know, live out this fantasy in our head that we created. We get into it because we got a kid. You know, it's getting into it for the wrong reasons. I feel like it's the first mistake. The second mistake I would say is, I want to say losing yourself to the relationship. So it's almost like you cut off, like you don't have no family, you don't have no no me time, you don't you don't do anything for. It's all about I gotta make sure I keep this marriage because I, I I gotta I gotta do for him, I gotta do for him, I gotta do for the kids, I gotta do for the kids, and it's like you neglect self, you neglect you know healing your healing you neglect like focusing and men do this too so it ain't just about women but i know you you ask about women um but we neglect ourselves to make sure the other person is good for the relationship and that does eventually that does not work out well for either one mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's that's good because I like that you said that a lot. And men are guilty of it too, right? It's like losing yourself or cutting off all your friends. And it's just kind of this whole Bonnie and Clyde thing. It's, you know, you and me against the world. But you you, need, you still need your community. Absolutely. That, like the, the self-cation, I can't remember if that's what you call it. Like the self-cation, like it's so foreign to think that it's okay for me to have me time. You know, it's like, you, your wife is not your whole life. Your kids is not your whole life. Like, what? Who, who, who came up with that narrative? And then why are we running with it? You know, like, yeah. nah, I know. Yeah, I've yeah, I've been catching a lot of heat with the solo location thing. Solo location, uh, okay, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people been been coming for me, and I I kind of figured that, but it's okay. But and I tell people that comes from trust. People don't value trust until it's broken. You know, morals and values are only important to us when somebody do us wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, you might even say that one again. <laughs> <laughs> like we can treat, we can do people wrong. We can do what we want to do. But until somebody do us wrong, how are you going to do that? And all of a sudden morals and values are important now. I'm going to even say insecurity, too, because it's, it's a lot of relationships where that man, that particular man didn't cheat on you, but you're holding him to the standard of the man that did cheat on you. So you're telling me he can't go on a solo location because you don't trust him? Like, why you got to be uh, like, so you're holding him against the hurt or holding him to the hurt that another man did. I will also argue the point a lot of women are getting in relationships and they are completely unhealed. They are completely broken. And you're starting a new cycle, new relationship with somebody else and you're devastated. You got heavy trust issues. And that happens a lot, the, the, the trust thing, because when you lose the trust, it's hard to gain it back. It's hard to get it back when you lose it. Mm -hmm. um, even even in previous relationships, like you said, somebody hurt you 10 years ago, you hold on to that hurt and you didn't have two relationships, three relationships since then. But that one person that hurt you, everybody else has to pay for it. Yeah. Unfortunately. I, say, uh, huh. I said, unfortunately. Yeah. But go ahead. And I say it, it all the time. Um, I made it, I think today I made that post or yesterday. Um. But I said, if I'm have a if I have a man, if I'm in a relationship and I have a man doing me right, he he good. I ain't got no issues with him. Why would I spend most of my day and every day posting about the man that's a cheater? Posting about a man ain't S H I T. Like you putting your energy into the person that hurt, hurt you. I have no choice but to believe that the current person you with also ain't doing his job. Like some you, you so if people come for your current current person, you can't get mad. Oh no, I don't talk about my man. Well, you talking about him apparently or something. Cause why most of your posts is focused on something that your man ain't doing. Mm -hmm. If he ain't cheating on you, why most of your posts is talking about cheating? Let's 
let's focus on happy relationships. Since that's what you in, let's focus on happy relationships and try to get other women, you know, to the happy relationship that you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, I didn't think about that. That's good because <laughs> because I will say that I, this is just my theory. <laughs> I believe that, as you can tell, I'm very opinionated. <laughs> that we can have more healthy relationships if people supported healthy relationships Absolutely. if 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 there's a whole bunch of drama if we support drama and dysfunction and all this other stuff that's what culture is going to continue to copy and until we decide to make changes and I always tell people my motto is change start with me yep yep and I agree wholeheartedly agree I um I'm divorced so when people find out before they find out about about the marriage they know I'm quote unquote single so they attack. I ain't taking no advice from no single person. Then when they find out the voice, well, yours didn't work. Why would I take advice from you? You don't have to. Go find a happy person that's in a relationship or that's married and go listen to them. Get off my page. Go find somebody, you know, like, because if you listen to the content that I create, it's not putting men against women. It's trying to mend us together. It talks about accountability and it talks about mindset change. So you focusing on my title to debunk the information that I'm giving, will you just stay in your unhappy whatever you got going on? Which is probably a situation ship because it seems like those are winning. Situation ships and sneaky links. Seem like they are winning more than, you know, so it's like we focus, it's like we want to focus on the downfall of relationships. Instead of link, linking up with people like your platform, my platform, it's a bunch of other platforms. Instead of linking up with them, that's trying to get us to a place mentally, because you, you gotta be mentally and emotionally stable for a relationship. So I don't, I don't care about no titles. We ain't talking about titles. We talking about the mental and emotional health of the two people that's in the relationship. So if you can't get past the part of uh, that somebody who's single or somebody who is remarried trying to get you to a more healthier state then you ain't ready for no relationship mm-hmm. and you ain't gonna ever be in one that's healthy because you you're missing the point mm-hmm. yeah because a lot of people they like to focus on the negative and then like you said instead of listening to the content and it could be because you said something that can tr- might have triggered them you know hit a hit I'm dog sure. holler. yeah I'm, I'm sure yeah, a hit dog will holler every time. The thing with social media is, I tell people, look, if you don't have nothing nice to say, don't say it. It's, it's simple. You don't like it, just keep scrolling. So let me tell you one thing I do um, in my platform, too, and I tell people. Because um, people, they call me names all the time. Their favorite line be pick me. And I'm like, baby, nobody even wants the men that y'all want. So trust me, I ain't trying to be picked by them. I'm a simp. They call me a simp. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm sure yeah. and it's, it's always some ain't it like listen to the information what is why y'all trying to like debunk the information and if the information is ain't for you because I tell people all the time what works for one relationship or marriage does not work for all so if it does not work for you that should feed off and go on you know find a platform that works for you or because I've done this before plenty of time it'll be something like I'm like uh-uh won't do it nope but I'm listening because I'm like, dang, they passionate. And I, I see the heart of them. And I'm like, I understand the intent of what they're saying. Even though it won't work for me, I'm not going to bash them because what they're giving out is actually good information that may work for somebody else. But see, we don't have a maturity level. We just look at people, oh, dude, you a simp. Okay, bro, well, go to therapy and go get healed from whatever woman hurt you because what we're talking about is really good information, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. You know why we got to go to the name calling? Mm-hmm. But I tell people all the time, I was like, you know, how you deal with other people on social media, that's a form of showing your communication style. That's a form of showing your conflict resolution style. And I, be, I tell a lot of women when they go call me and pick me and all this, I'm like, I could tell how your relationships go. If you ever make it to one, I could just tell how the dudes feel when they're dealing with you because you get straight to name calling as soon as you're mad. Mm-hmm. You get straight to bashing, bringing up the deepest part, the darkest secrets of somebody as soon as you're mad. Mm-hmm. I, I, I just know how your stuff go with people. 
That's good. Yeah, that's good because I, I heard someone say that they check whoever they're dating their social media profile and like you're saying and see how they converse with people. And if they're doing that, they're like, nope, you, you know, you hiding behind your, your social media plat. This is really who you are. I told, I told, I ended up making a post after I told the guy, but, um, and people say it all the time. I'm sure you've seen it too. And I'm, I'm the different person. I'm the one that stands out from everybody. I say judge people by the social media. And I'm gonna tell you why. I told a dude, he told me that same thing. He tried to talk to me and I was like, no, based off how you move on here, like we ain't compatible, we ain't gonna match. So he got in his feelings trying to, you know, be rude about, you can't judge me off her. Yes, I can. Because I see how you calling all these women bees and hoes and all of that. Like, I see you doing that when you mad. Why would I be dumb enough to thank you knowing that when you get mad at me, I'm gonna be a bee in a hole and all that too. That would be dumb on me. So say, like, oh, don't judge my face social media. Yeah, let's hang up. Come on now. Mm-hmm. You can definitely tell personality based off of social media. Let's let's be real. We we want people to be real until it's time to be real. Let's be real. Yeah. And yeah, because there's a lot of people who, especially when it comes to people profiles and stuff, if you have a picture of a cat or the incredible hawk as your profile picture i'm not going to i'm not going to even respond to you you know <laughs> if you know if, if there's a picture of, of black panther or popeye I, i'm not responding because i'm like you too lazy to put up a, your your own picture I tell dudes all the time, you got a you got a profile picture where you posting guns, or I go, or even if it ain't your profile picture, I'm going down your page and I see you posted up with your little cute thug doll captures and guns, bro. I don't want you. We we do not match, and I'm not gonna mix us together. Uh uh-uh. uh. Well, you can't judge me off of that. Yes, I can, and I just did. Yeah. And I made a post before. I said, listen. I said, let's be real. And a lot of women need to do this too. That's why we're in situations that we're in, getting fooled. Because we lie to ourselves. But I made a post and I said, this is not Blue's Clues. I don't have time to figure out which is the real you, your Facebook or the in-person you. Like, I don't have time for that. Because if you got to pretend for Facebook to be, or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you got to pretend for social media to be a complete different person, to be liked, that's a huge red flag. I love it. That's good. I totally agree. And there's there's even been sometimes because uh, I'm a, I'm a big Twitter guy, I have won over more haters because uh, I I've I say some stuff Brandy and that and on Twitter it goes crazy for some odd reason because I say controversial stuff, um, not controversial stuff I would say healed stuff I always believe healed people hear different. Oh, absolutely. You know, so I'll post something and you'll get the people that come for me, they start saying stuff. And like, I'll respond with like a laughing emoji or something like that, whatever they say. I just kind of laugh with them or whatever. And some people be like, oh, you got a sense of humor. I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm 46. Mm-hmm. I grew up in an era where people just talked about you. Like there was no filter. Like, hey, you're ugly or hey, you're fat or like any terms that we have today for putting the shaming after it, you're such yeah. a such shaming, you know. Right. I grew up in an era where it wasn't no shame. So I'm like, so you gonna respond and say something. I'm like, you're just a misunderstood fan. That's mm-hmm. all. See, and I uh, was talking to my homeboy today and I said, yeah, I got, I got some growing to do when it comes to that part because I have reached a level of protect my peace to where I will block you fast. I will block you fast. I ain't got time. And so I, it's like, depending on what day you catch me on, I might play around with you a little bit and go back and forth. But then after a while, I know by the end of the day, I'm about to block you. Like, that's probably, you know, because like, I told my homeboy, I was like, because I feel like once they get you out of, like I, I like to say, once they get you out your body, they're going to come back again and do it again because they know if they hit the point, they know what point that they hit. And I said, as a person that's in the path that I am, I know myself which means I know the parts I'm healed from. I know the parts that's triggered me. 
So if you get me to a point where I have to really literally cuss you out really bad, I know I'm blocking you by the end of the day if you don't block me first. Because you're going to come punch, point, you know, point that, touch that spot again. I don't want to get out of my body like that again. Not so I need to work on what you got going. I need to, I need to get to that level. <laughs> That, that that was an influencer. She she told me she followed my page and she's real cool. You probably even know her, but she was like, I saw how you maneuver because I posted some tweet that went crazy. And she was like, I saw how you was maneuvering through different stuff that people were saying, you know. And I was just like, no, it's 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 all good because again, I, I don't mind. I'll you can say whatever and I'll laugh at it. It's it's whatever. Um, cause at the end of the day, you're going to end up checking out my page anyway, and you're going to end up going yeah. to, you know, so it's okay. I got a bunch of misunderstood fans and it's all good. I got love for everybody. For you to take time to comment on my content, re- regardless of whatever you want to say, I'm like, thanks. Cause you thought about me. You responded. Yeah, I, I think, and again, like, I guess everything I relate to is kind of going to relationships, you know, whether that's friendships, associateships intimate relationships I feel like everything you do ha- is going to relate back to your personality and your character with it so I say all the time and I say all the time like I don't mind disagreements it's a disrespect I'm not going to tolerate and so it's like people will still try me I'm like then I'll say something back and I'm like oh you just don't want nobody to disagree don't deflect don't yeah. deflect and you know and don't don't try to um tell me I'm doing something that I'm not doing like it was dis- disagreeing was okay you started getting disrespectful that's when I had to check you you know so it's like I don't know I just sometimes it's like if you get to that disrespectful point I, I just gotta block it you just gotta go I ain't, it's too many other people I gotta make you know save my energy for like no you gotta go once you get disrespectful so yeah no for sure and you know we are we are different and like you said we it's we can we can agree to disagree and, that, and that's cool you know, I always tell people we we can still be cool and disagree. You think the sky red? I think it's blue. It's okay. We still cool. Again, still- that's that's a tactic. That's a tactic. A personality trait you're going to need in relationships. And that's why I tell people I don't come tell me I don't like people disagreeing. That really boils 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 my blood. I don't care about you disagreeing because in relationships, friendships, you're going to disagree because your person can't always think like you or act like you or you know move like you like they're going to be different so the goal is to not control them but allow them the space to be them while also being respectful yes you know so i love it and that's something that you can use for marriage because this time around i was telling my wife i'm not trying to change you yeah do we have differences? We don't always see eye to eye. I think she weird in some areas. She think I'm weird in some areas. Right. But I'm like, you know what? We're going to make this thing work and it's mm-hmm. okay. And and I'm just going to love you for who you are. I I don't have a mental bandwidth to try to change people anymore. I tried mm-hmm. that in my first marriage. It didn't work. Man. Oh, oh my goodness. My first one. Like, just even people, friendships or dating. I'm just like, yeah, the next person I'm serious with, I, I got to breathe. I ain't doing all that. Like, I'm gonna take you at face value. I'm gonna see if your effort is. Make sure you're not not you. I'm just gonna see because I ain't got the mental capacity to change nobody. Like it's just all about agreeing to disagree, respecting boundaries. You know, yeah. all of that. So totally agree. Uh, we're gonna switch gears a little bit. I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, these are three questions I ask. Well, sometimes four, three or four. Uh, I always ask all my guests, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Um, a lot, obviously. One of them we just discussed, like, it's, it's not your job to change the other person. Um, when you choose somebody, make sure you're choosing them with the thought that they may never change. So, you know, don't go in. I don't do the potential thing. I did that with my first one. Like, I don't do the potential thing. What you show me right now when I choose to be with you, that's that's face value. Like, I got to I gotta be okay or be accepted that, you know, if you never, ever change, this is the person I'm supposed to love for the rest of my life. So I learned that part. So not trying to change the other person. 
um, learning to be your sole location, learning to comfort not make your life all about, you know, the other person to where you lose yourself. Um, I do believe in having um, parent dates or, you know, mommy and or daddy and child dates. Uh, mommy and child dates. I do believe in having me dates, me time. I do believe in having friend dates. Um, and I obviously believe in making sure you pencil time in for, you know, each other. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe it's a lot. Because <laughs> I had all this wrote down, I could just go like this. Um, I do believe in listening to understand way more than I've ever understood that. Like we hear that a lot, but like, no, that is really something that has to be done. Because again, you have to listen to understand what the other person is saying, or you're going to make up in your head what they're saying. And then you're going to create a problem that's not even there based on what you made yourself feel like they're saying, you know? So that listening to understand is way more important than I've ever known it to be, you know, before. So that's good. Know, it's a that's three. It, it's <laughs> all good. So it, it's a it's a lot of things though. It's just relationships are case by case. So it's almost like I could say some stuff that I feel like should be for a relationship and you'd be like that doesn't go with relationships, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, I don't know. It's kind of hard to yeah. list a whole bunch of things right now. Well, it's all good. I'm pretty sure I'll be bringing you back. So, you know, okay. make sure you jot down notes. I'll, I'll make sure I bring you back because we got we have more stuff to discuss. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's interesting because transparent moment real quick. Uh, my wife and I, we were talking last night. And she said something to me that made me have to think about our overall relationship and the way I carry myself and the way I treat her. And it was like, oh, man, there's some great moments, but then there's some areas that I need to work on. And when she told me like areas that I need to work on, I was like, you know, instead of being defensive, because defensiveness got me divorced the first time because I mm -hmm. always trying to be defensive and deflect. I was like, you know, that's something I need to work on. I'm, I'm going to tighten that up. And just to respect her opinion, like that's how she felt. And I'm like, I need to get that together. I need to tighten that up because you told me how you felt. It wasn't about, well, no, she said mm -hmm. something. This is how she felt. This is her reality. And mm -hmm. there's some areas that I need to work on and I'm going to work on it. Opposed to me saying something that that's deflective. Now she felt like she's not being heard. Mm -hmm. So she told me today when we talked, she was like, thanks for listening. And I was like, no, for sure. Because that's what I've learned over time. It took me a long time, Brandy. Better yeah. late than never. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Um, I like that you said that because that brought up, um, going back to the question you asked about the marriage, like things I've learned, but um, accountability is a major part in relationships and marriage. Um, what you what you did was was really good, like you accepted what she said you received in. Now, whether it is true from your view or not, it doesn't matter. That's what she gets. And so instead of like, yeah, dismissing it and because, yeah, men can do that a lot, like be very dismissive and I don't want to argue. And I ain't you got tripping, time to, girl. You, know, you tripping. You know how men do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want peace. I just want peace. And you the one disturbing the peace. Like, <laughs> listen, when she's telling you <laughs> the things that you need to fix. Um, so, yeah, accountability is major and also um, projection. Um, so I think earlier I said deflect deflection, but deflection. it's really projection. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It really was projection that I was um, thinking about because it's like, I'm listening to you. I'm hearing you. I'm really trying to work on it. But because it's not going fast like you wanted to, now you tell me that I ain't working on it. When the whole time you ain't even working on it. You know, so it's like, don't project onto me the things that you are doing. Like, I'm, you know, so keep that line of communication definitely open. 
definitely be receptive and yeah i like how you did that like you know even if you don't agree you know what yeah let me look into that mm -hmm. let me sit with myself a little and in your soul location like that can be for men you know the um and even women like mm -hmm. that's your time to reflect on the relationship and the kids and breathing yes you need that but in that time of you breathing that's also your self-reflection moment you know the that you that the wife been saying you know, the husband been saying you know what i can be a better person on x y and z you know i got time to breathe and think now. so when i get back to them it, it's time to work so. for sure last question this isn't a trick question it's just based on uh <laughs> it's, it's just based on what what you think is it easier to love yourself or someone else Mm. there's no wrong answer yeah no I think it's easier to love someone else I will only say that because I do think a lot of people don't really love themselves like they say they do um, I see it in the way like a lot of us can't even sit with ourselves like when we just alone, we we so bored, we probably like, oh my God, what's there to do? Sit with yourself. You don't like yourself enough? You know, like just sit there, like entertain yourself. So I think it's easier to like, love, entertain somebody else than it is ourselves because it, it makes us, <laughs> it makes us really have to, that self-reflection, it makes us really have to self-reflect versus somebody else oh i can run to the store because i can love you i can buy this i can do that you know i know what you want so i can do it for you it's easy for me to do it for you than it is to sit with myself and really understand myself like mm -hmm. or love myself mm -hmm. yeah uh, yeah that's real <laughs> i like that i always <laughs> ask my guests those questions I, I i like to hear people's perspective well can i ask can i flip that when i ask you your response on that? Yes. It's easier for me to love someone else because I'm so in my head a lot of times. Like, I know me. I know areas that I need to work on. I know where I'm a mess at. I know my biggest struggles. And I'm just like, Ugh. you know. So you uh, run from yourself. Yeah, and here's the thing, though. My my wife knows my biggest struggles, too. So it's not so much of that. It's just like, it's like, no, she know. Because I heard one day somebody said vulnerability is telling your spouse not the question that they asked, but you told them just what was going on inside of you without them having to ask. Yeah. Like, that's that's vulnerability. Like, you know, today I was struggling. I fill in a blank. Like they didn't ask you. Yeah. But you shared what was going on internally without mm -hmm. them having to ask. That's vulnerability. Yeah. So I thought that that was pretty heavy. Um, but yeah, I think it's easier to love somebody else because I know me and and, and my my shortcomings. Yeah. So that's for me. Uh Brandy, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Tell us about what you got going on, products, website, let everybody know. Um, so you can pretty much see everything I got going on, the products that I sell. Um, I have a clothing line. I'm not currently doing it right now because um, I make all of my stuff and it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. But um, I do have a relationship workbook for those who are dating. It's for men and women. Those who are dating, married, single, divorced, widowed, it's, it's for everybody. Um, in that book, it is a workbook. So in that book, there are about 30 topics. Um, I speak on each topic, but I have a man and a woman also speaking on each topic. Just so we can kind of see how men think and women think, you know, on, on each of those 30 topics. So um, that is the product that I'm selling right now. Um, you can get all that on my website. I do try to, I have not been too consistent, but I do try to offer a uh, monthly Q&A uh, classes. Um, they are private, so there is a fee, you know, to join into there. Um, limited seating. Every now and then I offer like an actual class class, 
I am a co-ed brand, so all my content is for men and women. I don't necessarily, unless it actually says it on a class, I don't necessarily only tailor it to women. It's, it's for, you know, everybody. So just go on my website, uh, brandyyakes.com, and you'll get all my products, everything that I got going on right now. Um, I offer life coaching sessions, vent sessions, all of that you can get on the website. But my social media is Conquering Relationships. It's LLC, but I, I think if you just type in conquering relationships, you'll be able to pull me up. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I'll have everything linked up in the description and in the podcast and the show notes and stuff like that. So everybody make sure you go connect with Brandy because I only bring the best on It's Scary to be Married. I want to <laughs> acknowledge you, Brandy, for starting the business because we know what it takes th that goes on behind the scenes. Very few people, they just see, you know, you pop up with makeup looking cute, but they don't know what goes on behind the scenes. So hey, where you come from? <laughs> yeah. Long time of studying and researching. That's where I come from. Exactly. So I want to acknowledge you for starting the business and acknowledging you for being countercultural. I, I appreciate that you are uh, a voice that's that's willing to create change. I think very few people have muster the courage to want to create change even though they might feel a certain way they might want to agree with you on your content but they're afraid yeah. to agree with you yeah um, because we're tribal people so i want to acknowledge you for those things i also want to acknowledge you for surviving your divorce because divorce is real and we don't yeah. know what comes with that until you go through it mm -hmm. yep. so uh, i want to acknowledge you for those things Brave Arts community, make sure you go connect with Brandy. If you are listening to this, make sure via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave a rating and review by doing so. It puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free Amazon gift cards? If you are watching this via YouTube, I'm trying to get in people group chats. That's how you get more views. <laughs> get in the, in the group chat. You send a video or the TikTok. That's when everybody starts following you. So that's what I'm trying to get into. Uh, yeah, but anyway, this is Sean Heineman with special guest. Brandy Gates. <laughs> All right, Brave Arts community, take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.